Organic compounds are primarily molecules as opposed to atoms. And in this lesson, we're going to understand the basic principles involved in the bonding in organic molecules. But to start with, let's talk about why molecules exist, period. The general principle is that molecules exist because they are more stable. And when I say more stable, I mean lower in energy than isolated atoms. And it should be very good for us that molecules exist, otherwise the universe would simply be a collection of atoms and there would be no intelligent life. So the guiding principle that is, in my opinion, one of the most important principles in all of chemistry is what's called the octet rule. The octet rule simply states that each atom in a stable molecule or ion, so an ion is also known another word for a charged molecule, wants to have a full valence shell of electrons. Okay, what's a valence shell? A valence shell is simply the outermost shell of electrons. We need to begin by considering what the capacity of the valence shell is for different elements. And this is very easy. You just look at what period the element is in on the periodic table. So for this course, the elements that we're going to be most concerned with are hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Hydrogen is in period one. The other three are in period two. All elements in period one have a capacity of two electrons in their valence shell. All elements in period two have a capacity of eight electrons in their valence shell. Now, except for the noble gases, which of course exist as monoatomic molecules, as free atoms, if you will, all of the other elements, their atoms do not have enough valence electrons to fill their valence shell. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, the number of valence electrons for a particular element is that element's group number on the periodic table. So if we look at this, hydrogen, has one valence electron, helium has two, and then in period two we can use the group number strictly. So lithium's in group one, it has one valence electron, beryllium's in group two, it has two, etc. Carbon is in group four, it has four valence electrons, nitrogen is in group five, oxygen's in group six, etc. So what that means is for carbon, it has only four valence electrons, but if it were to obey the octet rule, it would need eight valence electrons. In order to be happy, it's got to get those four electrons from somewhere. Let's keep that fact in mind. Okay, so atoms combine to form molecules using chemical bonds in order to satisfy the octet rule. Well, what are the different types of chemical bonds? One type that you may have been exposed to in a general chemistry course is ionic bonding. And that is when one of the atoms loses or gains one or more electrons in order to attain a full valence shell. So once an atom gains or loses electrons, electrons of course have negative charges. So if it loses an electron, it's gonna have less negative charge. Therefore, it will have an overall positive charge. If it gains electrons, it will have more negative charge and therefore have a negative charge. So the classic example of ionic bonding is sodium chloride. Okay, so sodium loses an electron. It's in group one. It loses that one electron in its outermost shell. Chlorine gains an electron. And as you can see in the diagram, both atoms, once they form ions, have eight electrons in their valence shells. Okay, so then the way you get bonding out of this is that cations, of course, are positively charged. Anions are negatively charged. We know that opposite charges attract, so they are simply attracted to each other to form bonds. Now, ionic structures, sodium chloride is not just a molecule containing one ion of sodium and one ion of chloride right next to each other. They tend to be large lattices in which each cation is surrounded by many anions and vice versa. Okay, so depicted here is a small portion 
of the sodium chloride structure, this lattice continues for a very large um, amount in three dimensions. And you can see that the sodium cations in red are surrounded by six chloride anions in green and vice versa. However, ionic bonding is not something we're going to talk about very much more in this course. It's not very important in organic chemistry because for carbon to participate in ionic bonding, it would have to gain or lose four electrons to have a full valence shell. Things that have to gain or lose one electron, that's easy. But gaining or losing four electrons is going to be energetically unfavorable. So if carbon does not participate in ionic bonding, then what does it participate? Well, the answer is the other major kind of bonding, which is called covalent bonding. So covalent bonding is when two atoms share a pair of electrons with each atom contributing one electron. And what's important about this is that the shared electrons become the property of both atomic partners. A way I like to think about this is that if you get married, you will bring some stuff, your spouse will bring some stuff, and then when you make your household together, all of the stuff that previously belonged to each of you individually now belongs to both of you together. Okay, so a picture of this is carbon has four valence electrons. Hydrogen has one valence electron. So if carbon binds to four hydrogen atoms to form the molecule methane, both elements will satisfy the octet rule. Okay, so on the left here is atomic carbon and four atomic hydrogens, and you can see that none of them are happy. But then on the right, when we form a methane molecule, the one electron from each hydrogen and the each of the valence electrons from the carbon come together to form a two electron bond. So all of those electrons, the eight electrons around the carbon count towards the carbon and the two electrons on around each hydrogen count towards that hydrogen. So carbon and hydrogen are both happy. And the way we typically draw this is we use a line to represent the bond. So we draw a C for carbon, an H for hydrogen, and a line between them indicating the two electrons in the bond. Okay, so we've already established now that carbon can form four covalent bonds, but in order to be successful in this course, we have to know how many covalent bonds each of the important elements for organic chemistry can form. Okay, the general principle here is that the number of covalent bonds that an element can form is the smaller of the number of valence electrons that it has, which we've already seen, and the number of available orbitals. Well, that's a new concept. What's an available orbital? Well, you should know from general chemistry that an orbital can contain only two electrons. So an orbital is available, meaning that it can participate in bonding if it is either empty or half-filled. If an orbital is filled, it's not going to want to get involved in sharing electrons with any other atom, and it's not going to participate in a traditional covalent bond. It can participate in a different kind of covalent bond called a coordinate covalent bond, but again, that's not terribly important in the simple bonding of organic molecules. Okay, so again, we can go through the same elements. The number of valence electrons is just repeated from the prior slide, but let's consider the number of available orbitals. Elements in period one, there is just one orbital in that first shell. So in helium, that orbital is filled. It has its two electrons. Therefore, there are no available orbitals, and helium forms no covalent bonds. Hydrogen, on the other hand, has only one electron, so that orbital is considered an available orbital, therefore it forms one covalent bond. Moving into shell two, period two on the periodic table, 
what I want to consider in, do, in making this table is all four orbitals that are available in shell 2. Okay, so shell 2 has a capacity for eight electrons, which means there are four orbitals available in shell 2. And for the purposes of this table, we are not considering the difference between s orbitals and p orbitals, and we're not yet considering hybridization. We're going to bring those concepts into play later on when we talk about molecular geometries. So for the moment, we're just going to say there's four orbitals in shell 2. So for lithium, beryllium, boron, and carbon, all four of those orbitals are available because you want to put one electron into each orbital until you fill them all. Once we get to nitrogen, though, we have five valence electrons. There's only four orbitals, so we've got to put two electrons into one of those orbitals. We've got to fill one of those orbitals. That means only three orbitals are available. Therefore, nitrogen forms only three covalent bonds. This trend continues. For oxygen, we have six valence electrons, but we only have two available orbitals because we have to pair up the electrons in two of those four orbitals. Therefore, oxygen can only form two covalent bonds. For fluorine, we have seven electrons. We have to pair them up in three of those valence orbitals. That leaves only one available orbital, and fluorine forms one covalent bond. And then finally, in neon, you have eight electrons. You're going to fill all four valence orbitals completely. None of them are available, and therefore neon does not form any bonds and is a noble gas.